Well, hello, 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 everyone. Man, do we have a treat for you today. We have the one and only Ben from Stella Automotive. We ha he is head of product, not like, hey, I'm on, and not that it would be okay if he was on the, you know, doing conveyor belt stuff, but he is the head of product. And Ben and I had the chance to talk beforehand. And I just go, Ben, I'm just going to sit back and just keep talking. Like, I just want to listen to your accent a little bit longer. Just keep talking. Phenomenal talking beforehand. And now you all get to bask in the glory of Ben, head of product with Stella Automotive. We're talking all about how conversational AI is revolutionizing the automotive industry. And with this brilliant man right now, and, and let's talk about this for a hot second. Let's talk about how many times have you called, because we're talking automotive, let's talk automotive. How many times have you called the, a dealership and you're just trying to schedule, and I just recently did this, trying to schedule your service appointment and you get caught and hold hell. You're like, I just want to talk to a human being, please. But instead you get caught, you're caught and hold. You're being passed from person to person. In fact, the stats on this is that you're usually on hold for three minutes and how frustrating that is. And there are tools for this. There's awesome, awesome companies out there that are working with conversational AI. And we're going to jump into obviously facts, not feelings about this, a bunch of facts on this. But with my main man over here, Ben, who's going to jump into this. So, Ben, I am going to turn the floor over to you. But before I do, this is a topic. We've talked about chat GPT before. We've talked about technology before. There is someone out there that you, you all might be thinking, man, I'm not so sure about this AI, but I think we might need this. So as we get into this, tag someone that needs to hear about this message someone that hey well we're kind of thinking about this there's a service manager there's an owner our gm whoever it needs to be because as we all know right now last year last week billy won our facts not feeling swag i spoke with them between yesterday and day uh today there's someone out there that needs to hear this message so tag them in this get the conversation going with us so we can if you've got a question we've got ben right here to answer them so tag away share with this and we've got oh uh, thank you thank you we got the energy yeah i always bring the energy it's friday man it's friday and it's saint patty's day and and not only that you're thinking brooke where's the green don't worry we've got the green jordans on right now so that's that's where the green is for saint patty's day ladies and gentlemen we've got the got the green going on so ben kick yes. us off kick us off here dude let's go awesome thank you so much for having me on on the show i'm ecstatic to be here with your audience and yeah, love to dig into it. Let's yeah. do it. Yeah. So tell us, first off, before we jump into this, tell us a little bit about how you got into head of product because your journey to head of product is pretty amazing. So talk a little bit about how you got to head of product of Stella Automotive. Wow. It, it is a long journey. Um, and, you know, if you were to ask me a year ago, I'm like, automotive, voice, AI. Um, but yeah, I've been, I've been in the industry for quite a while, you know, Going back to my very first job, I was assembling headlights for GM and, and Toyota. Uh, went back to grad school um, and landed uh, my, my first post-grad uh, employment at, at Ford as, as a contractor, helping with hybrid engine component applications for the engineers. Uh, did a bit of consulting after that and then found myself back at Ford with um working on their tier one experiences for.com lincoln.com and that was 2011 yeah uh i was there for a full decade so i've done a lot of things on the sales and marketing side of of the industry at, at an oem level for a really long time fell in love over the last seven or eight years with digital retailing that's really where i cut my teeth got exposure to dealers and started really understanding, okay, the, the user experience up front, you know, can, can be designed and optimized. People want the Amazon experience, right? Click, click, click. I get what I want. And, you know, diving head first, I'm like, yeah, we can design this. This is not too bad. And then you've discovered that's just the tip of the iceberg. The, the real truth is the dealer systems. How do you integrate with it? And there are dozens and dozens of providers and partners that you've got to work with and collaborate with. You get all that done. Now you have to actually work with the dealers, processes and people. And that's just another challenge of its own. So 
solving customer experience problems for you know the automotive space is this three-legged chess game that is really challenging and at the end of the day it, it just takes focus because all what we want to do at least what i want to do is help the dealer the dealer deliver awesome customer experience and stella delivers that in spades and that's how i found myself here last year I love going back to what you just said about the going from the OEM to, to where you are now. I was reading an article, uh, always trying to stay up on the latest and, of everything at this point, I swear, but how chat GPT went to chat GPT four. And then it was correlating that with how the series and the Amazon and all of these, the, the voice assistants, I don't let me say voice assistant, uh, but all of those that they had this great opportunity to capitalize and how they just kind of fell flat on their face. And so you had these, all these amazing tools, yet they didn't capitalize on it. It was a short, short term, but then you had, wait, we're going to take something else, a technology. And then that grew. And so you're taking your OEM experience and saying, okay, I have this background with this background. Oh, wait, I can do this and this and this. And it's so, for me, I've got a very verse background as well. And knowing that, okay, I can see it from this angle and this angle. And then from there, I can correlate all of this together to capitalize on all this and help so many people. And so when we first talked, that's why I loved it. I was like, I could see that genuine want and desire to help other people. And I love that about you. It's been so cool to, to have the conversation, be able to get that. to know you about that. So yeah. Now, awesome. yeah, I, I, I just have a passion for customer experience and you and I kind of talked about my, my, my own personal stories and it, it, it's a motivation about how can I help, you know, make sure that the, the next um, person walking into the dealership to buy a car or to service the vehicle really gets a great experience, right? Um, so, you know, when, when Jocelyn reached out to me, you know, last September, I'm like, I, I'm not, I, I'm not an AI expert, right? By any stretch of the imagination, I understand the technology, I appreciate it, and I'm not a fixed ops guy. I, I am a sales and marketing guy. I can talk to you about Google Analytics and, you know, VDPs and, and, and all of that I, all day long. But she's like, you're exactly what I need because this is where we're going. And, and it's about the experience that we help dealers deliver back to, to the customers. So in, in large part, Jocelyn kind of pulled it off because she helped me see something that I wasn't seeing in myself. So, um, yeah. And that's what a true leader does. The true leader is able to see the, the, that within yourself that you personally can't see. So going on that, I'm going to throw down a couple of, once again, facts not fun. Let's throw down a couple of stats here to kick sure. this off into, into the, the funness of what conversational AI is and how it can help our automotive industry and really any, any industry. But because we're an automotive podcast, that's where we're going here. But right now, 59%, we're going to throw this up here real quickly. 59% of service appointments are made over the phone. However, the average hold time is three minutes. Like if I'm on hold for three minutes, whether I'm calling Walgreens, whether I'm calling a dealership, whatever it may be, if I'm on hold for three minutes, like how many of us are jumping off? Like we're going to abandon that call. So in 2020, 17% of cons customers hung up due to long wait time. Now this number then increased by 28% in 2021. So with that, Let's just kind of dive into the, our first of all of this is tell me the difference because people are like, okay, so well, you're talking about conversational iBrook. I have, it says press one for service. Isn't that what it is? No, that's an IVR. But this is a DV. Well, these are a lot of words, Brooke. What the heck is the difference here? So let's just start with the basics of what the heck is the difference between what is IVR and what's the difference between IVR and DVA? Let's just start with the basics. Absolutely. Yeah. So IVR, interactive uh, voice um, uh, reception, right? Um, it's been around since the late 60s. This is legacy technology. Um, and it it is in, in computer science using a couple of switches or if that statements, right? If you want sales, press one. If you want service, press two. If you want to talk to HR, press three. And, you know, it, it's a couple of selections that, you know, some amount of voice technology was de deployed 
right? To be able to, you know, have the telephone kind of speak that out. It may have been recorded in the very early days. Now a computer generates that sound and um, gives you those options. But at the end of the day, they're just selections, preset selections that cannot be deviated from until somebody manually goes back and updates those settings, right? <clears throat> There's not a lot of intelligence behind it. A digital voice assistant like Stella is a fully um, sophisticated artificial intelligence. And to be more specific, conversational AI, meaning it can understand what is being uttered or spoken. It retains it in memory um, and takes in more input and is able to utter back to you or speak back to you. And you actually have a dialogue like you'd have with a human being. And it's gonna hold that dialogue as long as it's going and remember various aspects of, of that conversation to lead you down the path that you want, to, you want to go. Do you want service? Sure. It can understand your asks, your intents, and help you get to where you want to go. Versus an IVR, you know, if you said one for one for sales, two for service, three for HR, but you said no, I want parts. You probably don't even have that option, right? You're gonna press one, two, three. What what happens next? We've all been programmed over the last thirty years. Zero, 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 zero. Operator, right? human, Operated. human. You have to get off of this, you know, Hope trap help. I find myself in. Um, that's not true with a digital voice assistant like Stella because it's going to understand and it's going to determine that, okay, maybe the options I've provided you isn't quite what you're looking for. Let's get you to a human being, right, in, in a very graceful and professional manner. So with that, we've got a couple of questions for Roland. And before I get to this question, I want to ask you, because I think the question that's being asked is going to be answered in this one. So what are sure. some of the most significant benefits you've uh, seen since implementing conversational AI and how have dealers and customers responded to the technology? I mean, the benefits are just on both sides, right? There is ultimate benefits to the customer. So let's start with that. That's the easy one. As a dealer, you, you want your your customers to get in touch with you easily get their needs met served delight them and get them on their way as quickly and as proficiently as possible ai allows that because think about the the experience that happens from the moment the customer finds your phone number whether they've saved it on their cell phone or gone to the website, most of the time they are probably looking for it, right? They, they found it, maybe they spent a minute or two doing that, they dial it. What is the actual psyche of that customer? They're probably gearing themselves for like frustration and stress of just having to battle with the IVR, which we, we just talked about a minute ago. But with the with Stella, that's gone, right? You dial at number one ring, Stella's talking, and if you're a known customer, it's starting to serve you. Um, you say you want an appointment, it's starting to book, and you're done in two minutes on average, just done. From a customer experience perspective, that's awesome. I want to book an appointment. Instead of it taking five, six, seven, ten minutes, it's done in two minutes. That's just efficient. Now, let's flip over to the dealer side. Think about it. How much time are you getting back because Stella's handling all of that for you at scale? How many attendants or advisors do you have either in your BDC or your front desk or your service uh, department? Let's just say you know, you're, you're a, a, a small dealership. You probably have one or two three maybe, right? And if they're all busy, somebody's talking to a customer that just walked in, another one's on the phone, um, another one just took the phone, what happens to that fourth customer or fifth customer or sixth customer that's just not called in? They're waiting in the queue on the telephone. They're pressing and battling the IVR. They're just 
being put on hold because um you know the customer uh service rep had to go find something right so the you just can't scale the demand you can't scale your team to meet the demand that customers are uh are are, are you know coming to your door you just read the stats the call volumes have steadily increased over the years it, it's somewhat ironic given all the tools at our disposal right i can chat i can uh, go to your website and, but guess what people are choosing to call the dealership um yet given all the challenges that dealership face face they, they've got to find a way to be able to scale and meet the the demands over the phone and that's i think one of the beauty of what stella does it it really alleviates that um bottleneck of not being able to answer all the phones at the same time. Yeah. And so we had a question come in earlier, and I think we kind of answered this. I don't know if you want to add to it or not, but so the question sure. that came in and said, how do dealerships monetize their data and manage their data to get more value, more revenue, and how can they do that? I'm, I'm assuming that this was more towards Stella. And we kind of answered, hey, we're you're taking the time. And that's Stella is working, or our digital voice assistant is working 24-7. Good luck that's finding cool. a person that's working 24-7. Good luck. Um, and, and then from there as well, as you're saying, answer all these, you're no longer being put on hold. You're going to take it and still be in hold on for three minutes. We're going to answer that call in two minutes, take care of everything. And if, if I remember the stat was correctly, the Stella answer can handle over 250 op codes if memory serves me. That's I think that's right. the, 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 we, and then because we are the luck of the Irish today, I was listening to different phone calls that I, if I was a person taking the phone call, I would have had a rough time understanding the, the accent. And in fact, I actually had to replay it and I go, oh my gosh, these digital voice assistants are so smart that they are able to pick up these accents very, very quickly versus someone would be like, oh, uh, hold on one second. Uh, I'm sorry, pardon, what was that? And then have to repeat it again. So there's no longer the, the passing around of, oh, go find this. Or the one I love is the amount of calls that take place after hours. Well, are yeah. you going to, is this, are you going to outsource that? How many different, how many calls come in after hours to schedule ROs? Well, that's money you're losing because that Absolutely. can't be scheduled. So I, I hope this answers your question. And if there's anything you'd like to add this, have at it. Yeah. I mean, I, I think it's not so much more about modernization, but the efficiency that Stella brings to the table and the 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 ability for you to take on more work and process it faster than you would have if you didn't have a style in place to your point brooke about the after hours um if, if if let's say you work six days a week right just the sunday calls if no one is there to answer those calls come monday what's happening right Oh, you have man. customers <laughs> walking in, uh, driving in, calling you first thing in the morning. I got to bring in my car. But you have voicemails and messages that were left over. Who's listening to that? Who's processing that to get back in to, to the customer? Nobody, home? first off. I'm going to interrupt you. Nobody listens to voice. The amount, I have so many different, the amount of my dealers, I go, does anybody actually listen to your voicemails? Oh, wait, we have voicemail? Yes, you have voicemail. Yes, listen to it. <laughs> But yeah, who's who's got the time to listen to that when you've got live customers at your door, at your base, phone is ringing, who's tending to that? Well, solve that problem. Have Stella handle those calls the minute they come in and schedule those appointments the minute they come in. We had, I had a great uh, um, a, a dealer reached out a couple weeks ago and said, um, the phones are quiet, but appointments are happening. We're doing work. And, you know, it's just kind of weird. The phones are quiet, but our service bays are full and it's just a better experience all around. That's the beauty of having a digital voice assistant like Stella serve up your clients instantly. Oh, I love it. Before we go on to the next question, I just want to bring up some of these questions. Like some of these comments are coming in because they're, they're so on point of what is going on here. So we, uh, we've got here that uh, we've got Lindsay saying so excited to, uh, to so excited to bring up Brooke and Ben go Stella. We've got a question that we just had up there. 
Steve, uh, Steve, Steve coming in with all, uh, Steve was always like, he's like a wise little Buddha. Like Steve is always I dropping love on. <laughs> we love Steve. If auto retail loses a customer between sales and service because the dealer customer ownership experience, uh, experience fragmentation, the lifetime value of the customer will never be truly realized That's between sweet. propelling the digital life, si life cycle process to connect the disconnected between a one-time transaction. Thereafter, if the basic expectation of answering the phone and navigating navigating to the desired result is fumbled, we must question our commitment to earning, in quotation, the recurring customer. Absolutely. Your dealer. Amen. Absolutely. Amen. Absolutely. Steven, I, I, I love you. We got to connect. Uh, <laughs> I'd love to talk with you. Uh, I, I watched your previous show. Uh, but yeah, that's a separate topic. But he brings up a really, really, really great point. All right, you just closed this deal. You you, you sold the car. Um, three months later, they want to come in for service. Do you professionally handle that next experience? Do you treat them still like gold? Nope. Because <laughs> that's what we're trying to do, right? Oh, I dread it. I dread it every time. Develop that long-term relationship so that your customer lifetime value is much greater than what it is. If we, if we don't solve the small problems, then we truly don't re realize the potential of what could have been. Um, he is yeah. dead on right. Oh yeah. Uh, yeah. It's uh Steve and I were just talking about this. It's just, it's very frustrating, man. We've got Ellen saying there is so much you can learn from listening to these passionate people. Ellen, thank you. Uh, I, I'm learning as we speak right now. I love Peter or press zero. It's either operator, human, or just you just hit zero as soon as the as soon as the IVR comes on here. Uh, it Larry, doesn't work sometimes. Oh uh, yeah, yeah, right. And Larry, I, Larry's in I believe Mississippi right now with the BEV. Every team right now down at Walt Massey saying uh, great conversation. Jeff is coming in here saying, I find that like internet, many dealers don't think about their phones at all until they go down. Very true. And even then, there's no focus on what the UX, the user experience is after the phone connects. Oh, my gosh. It's so true. So true, Jeff. And we've got Eric Painter saying, great point, Bren. Ellen's coming in as well. Fast track customer service, uh, satisfaction, excuse me. Uh, we've got Jeff coming in. Extended hold time may have been invented by the airlines, <laughs> ah, but with shortened staff rosters and more workload, it is, has taken a deep root in dealer service departments. And then we've got uh, by uh, by using data when engaging with customers. That what uh, that's what the companies who buy the data do. They use it. The companies that have the data, the rooftops aren't using it effectively. Oh yeah, that's so true. By using data effectively, you attract and retain customers, and your new and prospects customers are VIPs, not search engine. <laughs> yes. All right. Well, we got well, we had, a, we had a few more coming. While I was talking about uh, wow. Peter's coming back in saying, why do dealers lose seventy percent of their customers after the sale? Customer experience flat out. If we, if we can use AI to assist moving the needle upwards, that's a no-brainer. And then lastly, we've got one uh, back in here. We've got, oh my gosh, we've got another one coming here. I, I can't get them up quick enough. One well, of the biggest challenges in bringing data-driven decisions to dealership businesses, what dealerships could do to leverage business, and then uh, that we'll move on here is assist in dealer vendor opening their a, uh, APIs. I'm like, please, for the love of APIs, do, oh my gosh. Steven, did we not just talk about this? Like, was it yesterday we were talking about APIs? Man, that's a that's a whole, that's a show in itself, my friend. But let's move on here. How does DV, DVAs, we kind of talked about this a little bit, but uh, going on a little bit, how does it handle those complex, I, I know that I get asked this, I know you guys do as well. How does it handle those complex customer queries? And like, oh, well, you can't handle this. I know you can't handle this. Well, let's see if you can. So how's it handle those complex inquiries and what happens when the AI might actually not be able to handle that question? So what is, how does that happen? How, what do you guys do with that? So, I mean, maybe just take a step back to provide some context. We're, we've been a, a company now for a little over a year. Um, and we decided to tackle service first, specifically scheduling an appointment. Um, for, for any... AI to work, at least conversation on the wife for sure, you've got to give it a lot of training data, right? So, so Stella is learning the automotive language, automotive domains, and becoming very conversant in automotive. We, we started with just booking, and we're going to expand slowly into the entire 
automotive subjects and domains. So if, if we're talking about, you know, scheduling an appointment, um, do I have a recall? Um, uh, I have a warranty questions. Stella understands these words and terminology and puts them most importantly in context of the conversation, right? Because it's retaining all of that dialogue just like you would remember that Brooke said X two minutes ago. So that's what she's still talking about. Stella is able to do that. So she holds this conversation until it's it's over and makes decisions based on understanding that. So today, um, yeah, if you said my dog is sick, Stella probably won't know what to do with that. And she will transfer it to, to automatically to, to a service advisor to, to help you with that. Um, you know, if you, if you bring topics and subjects outside of auto, um, she probably will just transfer you to a human. She's, she's been taught to do that. Um, we have dealers that have asked for like very specific things. Hey, if we're going to talk about diamond coating, for example, Stella, thank you. But, you know, let's transfer that call to a service advisor. So it depends from dealer to dealer, right? Certain topics, they want Stella to answer um, and, and handle all day long. But certain topics, you know, it, it's just a little bit more complicated and they want to deal with it. Let's let's just take recall. Right. This is a common just going to bring that up. <laughs> right? um, yes, we, we, we can tell that you, you have a recall, but I can't probably schedule it tomorrow because I got to make sure I've got the parts and the technicians and everything I need to actually be able to service the vehicle. And Stella is not going to be, um, you know, de dealers see that as a very uh, complex topic right now. And they've asked us to just transfer those calls. Um, but you want to do an engine light check. You want to do a tire rotation. You want to do an oil change. You want to do a straight up op codes that we know. And to your point you made a few minutes ago, we understand 250 uh, op codes. Uh, and operations and are continually refining various ways that people ask for the same thing, right? She's hearing over and over. So she's getting better at those with every passing phone call that she takes. Um, so we're not trying to block people from talking to humans. We're just trying to make the process a little bit more efficient on both sides of that phone call. Um, and whenever someone opts to actually talk to an advisor, Stella will transfer um, to, 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 to the advisor. And if memory serves me, keep me honest here. It's just if someone says human, like I want to talk to human, it's transferred, correct? Talk to an advisor, talk to humans. I want to talk to somebody, representative, customer service, operator, front desk. I hate robots, right? <laughs> We've the world is taken over by robots. Okay, you're getting to a human. You're getting to a you, human. <laughs> we can connect you to an advisor. No problem. Yeah. So, so with that, I mean, I, the other thing that I I hear a lot from someone that has this, just I'll say, Aja, like they just are freaking out. Like, okay, then the onboarding process has got to be horrible. And from then, I, I want to be able to. Uh, I I got to customize it. How's your custom? How's your customization? That's got to be a question you guys get asked a lot. I'm assuming. We do. We do. And, and the incredible thing is, it's not. It's actually very straightforward, right? We, we, we get your phone numbers and we get your op codes. Uh, we configure that. We, we're not uh, changing your dealership operations. Stella integrates into your scheduler. So your rules about which advisor works and what uh, op operations, which service bay you've got express and you've got repair, all of those rules that you've spent years refining and making sure is, is properly uh, um, handled in your scheduler are respected. And, and, and Stella just asks the scheduler, do you have time available at this point? It looks at available slots and returns it back to the, to the customer, the customer makes a choice. You negotiate with the with with Stella and land on a time, and Stella will book that that time for you. you your rules about how you know how you run your dealership isn't changed by Stella, and we don't 
try to do that because we're only a broker sitting between the customer and your existing processes and tools and, and so forth. So with that, then uh, the follow-up question has got to be then what steps have been taken to make sure that you're not overscheduling the, the service department? Because I'm sure you guys get asked that too. And I, I know once again, working with dealers, I get asked that all the time. Well, they're going to overschedule me. They're going to book this on top of this. They're going to book the wrong thing. So talk to that. Um, I, I think that's, that's a great follow-up because Again, we follow your existing rules and what the schedule tells us is available and is not available, right? So th there's the opposite problem of what happens in the dealership today. There is the perfectly designed processes internally, um, but sometimes because we want to accommodate a client, we find that, you know, Maybe we can squeeze one more in this time slot, although it's already booked. Guess what? All three or four customers show up at the same time. Somebody's waiting longer than somebody else, yep. right? Stella kind of solves this problem for you because it's going to obey what you've already programmed and um, placed in, in place in, in your scheduler. So th there's that efficiency of actually maybe spreading out the work and filling all of your time slots and accommodating the amount of time each operations takes, right? So, so if, if, I, if, I, if, if I'm doing an oil change, okay, maybe that's a 15 minute job. I can schedule four of those in an hour and that's what you've you know, decided to, to kind of program into your scheduling system. Um, Stella is not gonna, Stella is gonna honor that. That's, that's the bottom line. She's gonna honor whatever you scheduled. Um, or, or set up for her to, to, to follow. So with that, then I, I got to play devil's advocate here then for a second. <clears throat> All right, Brooke. Well, uh, we, we're not sure because what if, what if 20 people call in at the same time and then I have 15 people book online at the same time? Well, Stella can't, Stella can't handle that, right? Then Stella's going to screw that up, right? What's your uh, answer to that? <laughs> no. <laughs> Stella's scalable. Stella's scalable. Um, she can handle close, like over, over 500 calls and I'm being conservative here. She's scalable outright. She, she'll handle all the phone calls that come into, to, into her. Right. So, so today, um, and maybe this is not true anymore, but you know, a, a few years back, right. If, if you get a hundred people calling you. Um, you you will start to encounter busy signals, you know, calls being dropped, and you encounter lost connections. That's no longer true um, because you know of companies like Twilio who've inve invented, uh, I should say, invested a lot of time in improving telephony overall. Scaling to handle the volume of calls is no longer an issue. Um, and from, you know, the back end side of things, from a Stella perspective, we can answer and handle as many calls as you can send our way. I doubt you're getting a thousand calls at a minute every day at the dealership. It would uh, be nice, but probably not. Great. It would be not. <laughs> You'd have to like double your uh, service base, but, um, you know, that's that's not an issue. Okay. We can all right. handle all the and it's calls. It's all lifetime. That, so whatever, all whenever something's done, it automatically updates in live. Correct. Okay. So, so you can have seven instances of Stella speaking at the same time, serving seven customers all at the same time. Okay. So the follow-up to that is going to be a, obviously the BDC. I mean, how does the yeah. DBA impact the role of the of the BDC, whether that's service and or sales? What kind of support does that have? Is there in that transition process? I I think uh, Stella is a great addition to, to, to the dealership and to the BDC overall. Why? Why do you have a BDC? Like what's the core purpose and role of a BDC? To drive income, drive demand. So you want your BDC to be spending a majority of the time making outbound calls, not fielding inbound calls and you know spending a majority of the time doing that. Yes, it's great if, if they take the call, schedule an appointment and, you know, serve the customer. We absolutely want that, right? 
But I think most dealers would want their BDC to be, you know, majority of the time spent on driving and generating demand. So if we're able to give back, um, imagine giving back an hour a day or two hours a day or three hours a day or 10 hours a day, uh, a month, a, a day. Yeah, a, a day to back to your um, BDC. What would they do with that? Yeah. How many more outbound calls could they make? That's the very proposition of Stella being in front and handling these these phone calls. So now you can take on more value added activity. Um, you can um, handle the complex tasks that truly deserve the attention of an advisor or a, a manager or a director. But for the routine easy, repetitive tasks, why not have Stella handle all that for you? Yeah. So if someone if someone is thinking, hey, after this conversation or even before the conversation, we're, we're kind of thinking maybe we need to go this direction now, you know, whether it's, you know, we've just been bombarded, we're not really, you know, we're, we're kind of thinking we need to go that direction. What are the questions that they need to ask themselves, ask their managers, and then proceed with asking yourself, of to make it most beneficial for the not for the dealership and the partnership with you. What are those questions they need to be asking to, to make the, the partnership most successful? I, I think it's really pretty straightforward, right? I mean, I, I'll flip that and say, what more can I do to meet my objectives? Whether it's um, you know the, the F and I department will get there one day. It's on my mind. <laughs> Um, or, or fix ops or or variable like what are the objectives we want to sell more cars we handle we want to handle more uh service uh service customers we want to increase our ro's well how do you do that without scaling your team and doing more fixed ops you have to capture more business up front and have the time for your technicians and advisors to get to actually performing, fixing the vehicles and getting them out, out there. Um, so Stella can help you pull demand um, forward so that you could then, you know, capture that business today. So the question is, is that even a question? No. Why? Why not take advantage of a solution that can actually help you accelerate your uh, progression towards towards your business objectives and goals, which is, you know, fix ops is the heartbeat of, of the dealership. It is, right? So the more efficient it is, the more operational it is, the better it is for the entire dealership. Um, so if I was a GM, a principal, or a, a, a direct service director, like I should be constantly thinking about how do I increase operational efficiency? Amen. 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 Like I, I, that's, I think we'll just end on that one, sir. Like that was just, yeah, exactly. Like it's, this is something that is, as I see more and more, whether it's a service tech shortage or whatever it may be, it's just, I dread every time that I have to get my car serviced. Like, and we've done, I, we've talked about this so much that I, per, like I always get my car serviced at a dealer. I just recently had to, and it was, it's, it's a nightmare. Um, and there are, there are a lot of dealers that are doing it. Awesome. Like I want to be very clear. They're all, they, they, they do it phenomenal. Their process is great. Um, overall, it's just, it's, it's, it, it pains me. And when you can, when you can speed up this process and, and make that as, as Stephen always says, connect that disconnected, connect the disconnected parts. This is one of those ways, like you can give the time back to your employees that who doesn't want more time? Like, man, I, I would love to be able to clone myself and give myself more time. That would be phenomenal. That'd be so great. If you figure that out, let me know. <laughs> I will. If you figure it out first, please let me know. Somebody please let me know. That would be phenomenal. I'd absolutely love it. Um, we'll, we'll finish up here as, uh, as we've got great conversation, Ben. I enjoyed a lot. Thanks for, for being here. And then lastly, we've got Matthew saying, well said, this is going back a little bit here. You have to meet the customers where they want to be met. Oh man, that's so true. 
it doesn't matter where it is, the channel, the customer demands, the business that, can, that continues to meet and exceed customer expectation, the medium of the customers choosing uh, are the real, real winners. I could, it's so, 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 so true. So we'll, we'll wrap this up here. As always, we're going to, we're going to jump in to the round here with some fun filled questions to get, to get to know you a little bit better, Ben. So first and foremost, before we do anything else, we gotta, we gotta let the audience know where they can find you. So those that are watching right now are going to be able to see your personalized link on where they can find you, but the audience that is listening, where can they get in touch with you? LinkedIn. I, okay. I've given up everything else. It's just LinkedIn. You can find me there. Uh, I, I have somewhat of an HD, uh, you know, I, I wouldn't say that, but I, I have attention issues. So LinkedIn. <laughs> okay. LinkedIn it is. Okay. Well, make it, make it easy. That's good. We'll take it. All right. What is your favorite thing to do outside of work? What's your favorite hobby? What are you doing to unwind? You know, um, I love walking. I love wooded parks. Um, and so, you know, probably after this call, when I de-stress, um, you know, I, I have a park nearby. I, I go, you know, into the woods. It's all of a sudden quiet. We, we live in suburban Detroit, but, you know, it, it, it's just quiet and peaceful. You walk for an hour or so. You de-stress. You, it, it's just calming. So anywhere I can find parks, uh, obviously, you know, I, I, I love, you know, taking a long weekend, going to Western, uh, Western Michigan, Michigan, Lake Michigan, there are great beaches, Muskegon, uh, Ludington, Grand Haven, all awesome uh, shores, lake shores. Um, so spend you, time there. And spring is finally coming there was no Chicago in there for somehow. You said lakes, but no lake. There was no Michigan in there somehow. I don't, I don't know how that you missed that. Well, uh, <laughs> I love Chicago, it, it, but no, I, I prefer sandy beaches and and uh, and, and wood. Well, so, so I'm guessing your favorite vacation spot has got to be the the lakes, the, the the shores there. I'm guessing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, every every spring and summer, we're we're probably there four or five times. You know, through, throughout it, it's a drive from here, yeah. but it, it's just it's a great experience. Just go outdoors. You know, leave the hustle and bustle of the city aside. Um, so yeah, I love it. And man, there's there's so many different studies of how just getting out into wilderness, and I. My idea of roughing is like waiting on the bellhop. So I'm not, a, I'm not very outdoorsy. That being said, is like just even yeah, just going out and putting your feet in the, yeah, I'm not, definitely not. You can ask any of my, our family, like my oldest brother is super outdoorsy. But like when the apocalypse happens, I'm like, we're going to go with him because he's the only one that's going to survive. But uh, no, but like just being, putting your feet, like bare feet it's in the grass, and- like just like what it does to ground you. It's, it's, it is quite amazing. But just it reconnecting is. is really, really good for you. So yeah, props to you. All right. Name of the show, Facts Not Feelings. So what do you do to distinguish facts from feelings? It can be in business or in personal life, but what are you doing to distinguish facts from feelings? So I know for a fact that I'm a, I'm a very emotional person. I I, I think uh, I I, I want to say I'm in touch with my feelings. And and sometimes that those initial reactions and what, what you think is not true. So I learned to sleep on it. Just sleep on it. And do you feel the same about the subject or the matter the next day? And most of the time, no. So th- that's one way I deal with. Is this really a fact? No. Just I sleep love on it. it. It's, it's so true. Uh, we had Owen Moon on a couple uh, weeks ago. And he's like, he goes, this is a 24-hour rule. Like, sleep on it. Come back to me in 24 hours. And let's see if it's still an issue. He goes, I'm yeah. out of time that it's not. Um, and Peter, you're right. My idea of roughing it is, is not wearing a pair of Jordans. You're right. That's pretty much true. <laughs> uh, Peter, also it's a great conversation. Thank you so much for sharing tech on can, how it can make us better. But yeah, it, uh, it is taking that emotional aspect out of it and just being like, okay, because sometimes it is a big enough issue that you do need, like the next day is still a big issue, uh, but just take a breath. Process it. Yeah. Take a breath. I love it. All right, let's go. What do you love most about this industry? Um, well, on a personal note, it's where I am. But f- for real, right? Uh, as I state, my, my very first job was at an assembly, like tier two supplier. 
So, so I've been in it for over two decades, in and out most of the time. But what really crystallized it for me um, was during the great financial crisis of 2008, 2009. And you know, I live in Michigan, Metro Detroit, and you could see the struggle of the big three. Um, and you know, my parents and a lot of friends live in Lansing, Michigan. Um, GM plants were closed there. Some of them were working in there. So you could see the impact. All right, not just of my friends, but of the entire community. Um, there are various industries that do really great work and help move you know, society along. The auto industry is right there. There's a dealer five miles away from me, a mile away. He's making an impact to the local community. It's enabling mobility. It's enabling freedom. Um, they, 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 the auto industry, I think, has one of the most impactful um, community service outreach out there. Um, we, we serve our communities in, in, in many different ways. And being a part of that to enable a dealer to be able to, to be successful, to be around, to be able to obviously, you know, provide employment for his staff and so forth is great. But we're core, at least dealerships for sure, are core aspects of the local communities. And, and I love that. Um, so so what, what I don't do outside work, one of the things I do is do community. So I, I love community and knowing that I'm in an industry that cares a lot about the communities they serve just resonates deeply with me. I love it, man. And then once you, uh, I, hundred percent still is from Damien, uh, Boudoir, and, uh, it's once you, you seek to serve your community and it'll serve you. I mean, it's, it's, that is something that's so big and it's amazing how far Yeah. We'll just leave it at that, but yeah. yeah. Okay. Let's go with what advice would you give your younger self? You know, um, I always prided myself in the ability to, to learn on my own pace and figure it out. Um, and, you know, I still need some humility in terms of being able to ask somebody else. I wish, I wish I had learned earlier that it's okay to have a coach, find a mentor, someone that can show you the ropes and provide you perspective because there's nothing that teaches you more than experience. It, it's great if you learn it yourself, but sometimes you pay a price for that. Yeah. Uh, find a mentor, find a coach early, right? And, you know, you know, there's some younger folks than, than me on this call, right? If you don't have one, go, go find yourself a mentor. And it doesn't necessarily mean you spend hours with them every year, right? Just touch base, yeah. uh, find a mentor. I, I wish someone gave me that advice early, early in my career. It's amazing how many times uh, that gets brought up on the show. Like the amount of times that people just like get a mentor, man. It is, and it's so, what it does for you and your growth, not just from a business standpoint and a professional standpoint, from a, a personal standpoint, it's cannot stress enough. It is so important. And a lot of times like you'll just stumble into it. Like I, I can't tell you how many of my friends without them even knowing it have become a mentor to me. And it's like, I reach out to them all the time. I'm like, dude, I just, I just had a conversation with a friend last night and it was just like, I just go, I just, my, I want to bash my head against the wall because of stuff that was happening from a, 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 a business standpoint. And we're just like, how does this just keep happening? But you need those people that you can, you can truly let your guard down and talk to them and have those, those conversations, both good and bad. But if you can't be truly honest with them and you don't have that person, it is so imperative that you have that. Uh, cannot stress enough. So I absolutely love that. Um, let, let's go with, let's go with a fun one. What is yeah. your favorite car, man? I got to know. I got to know. Um, and that's a tough question, but when I finally have to settle on one, I always go back to the Acura NXX. Ooh, it, it's fun. such a dream car. That's a fun one. It's such a dream car. So, you know, one of these days, knock on wood, maybe I'll actually get it. But, what year? Um, that's that's a old, tough one. Because they got the new ones and they got the old ones. I guess I'll go with the newer ones. Okay. I'll try one of the newer ones. They're, they're pretty, dude. They're pretty. So I know that you sent this back, and so I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna pick one of to these two. 
You had an awesome quote that I'd never seen. So I got to let the audience know your favorite quote because that's awesome. Yeah, He's, like, is it, it, it's a stumbling block to progress. Something to yeah, that effect. Yeah, yeah. I was just trying to pull it up here. Yeah. I'd never heard that. It, it, it was in a video and I heard it and it just stopped me. If you think about it, right? If you're complacent, if you just want an easy, if you don't do the hard things, you will never progress. Mm-hmm. So, you know, I remind myself of, of that notion every day. If it's easy, something amiss, right? Mm-hmm. Find the hard problems, focus on it. It may be painful, it may be difficult, but yeah. It's true, man. I, I love that. You said that over to me and I go, how have I never heard that? Like, ever, like anyone that knows knows that Denzel's like, if not my favorite actor, I think he is my favorite actor. And I go, how the crap have I never heard this from him? So it's like, was this in a movie? Was this, did, he, did he have a speech somewhere? But I love that quote now. That is, and it's so, so here. Oh, oh someone just, we, we, we've got Kate coming in here to save us. Ease is a greater threat to progress than yes, hard. Thank, thank you. Thank you, Kate. Ease a greater threat to progress. <laughs> thank you very much, Kate. Super appreciate that. But what an incredible quote. Like I, once again, I was like, dang, man, like it is. And I, it is. And if you, if you continue just to take the easy route, like are we ever, um, everyone knows I'm going to bring this back to sports, but uh, back before I, I tore and broke everything in my body, I was, I used to ski and then I was a snowboarder. But if you continue to take all, all the easy routes and never decide to go to blue and then to black diamond and double black diamond, are you ever going to get better? No, you're not. No, you, you've got to continually, it's the same, whether you, go to diamonds and the pressure you can do anything you want. But at the end of the day here is that you've got to have adversity and that adversity is going to make you better and better. So I love that quote. Love it. Love it. Oh, Ben, this has been such an awesome time chatting with you, getting to know you and just, ah, so awesome. Thank you. Thank you so much. So appreciate everyone. Thank you for being with us and have being a part of this as well. Thank you for the comments. If there's anybody, like we said before, if there's, Someone out there, you know, needs to hear this, that wants, you guys are lo- someone that's looking at this, share this with them, tag them with them. Thank you for all the comments rolling in here. Super appreciate it. And as always, as always, always find a way to serve today, find a way to help someone to ease their burden. You never know what is going on in someone's life. So make it an easier day for them. And with that, everyone, we will see everybody next week. <music>